Today on the Canadian Arcade, we're going to restore this Warlord's cocktail cabinet. In 20 minutes or less. Wait, what? So as you can see here, Josh and I have picked up this beautiful Atari Warlords cocktail. And I mean, this thing is in amazing shape. It's got everything here. It's just got the age of time with it a little bit. So I think we're gonna address a few things and Chancel will kind of take us through what we're looking at exactly. Yeah, so it, it definitely needs a bit of work. Now I know some people wanna leave a little bit of patina on their games. Some people wanna have them factory fresh. Um, I think this is just a beyond patina. Yeah. Yeah, so we need, to, we need to clean up a couple of things. So first and foremost, the whole thing needs a vacuum, a clean, a polish, that sort of thing. Uh, secondly, we're gonna rebuild the monitor uh, because the Geo7 in here ha has some issues. It's starting to curl a little bit. So we need to replace uh, all the capacitors in there. Um, it's got some board issues. Yep. Josh has figured that out. Yep. I think it's a RAM issue. Yeah, yeah, L5, L3 RAMs, yeah. And then um, also we want to powder coat all the metal. So the frame around the glass, the leg assemblies, um, and then the control panels. We're going to pull all that apart and we're going to have that all powder coated black again. Then we're going to also paint all the bolts black because a lot of them have corroded over time. All the leg bolts, all the hinge bolts, uh, we're going to clean up all of those. Um, and uh, one of the buttons, one of the LED volcano buttons uh, has failed so we need to replace that light uh, as well as one of the uh, reject buttons on the CoinMax uh, has broken off so we got to clean that up too. Uh, and we've also got some new glide feet coming uh, from Mike's Arcade, right? So yeah. Well, Josh has promised 20 minutes or less, so let's get to it. Yeah. All right, so now that we've got the top off and the glass and everything separate, we're gonna go and pull the monitor out. Uh, before we do that, because the monitor doesn't have like a frame to it, uh, the cabinet kind of acts as a frame, uh, the chassis itself is bolted to the wood. Uh, and then the tube is bolted to the wood up here separately. So we've decided to go and disconnect the chassis from the tube mm -hmm. uh, in order to get everything out. So in order to do that, uh, one of the things that we're gonna do is we're gonna discharge the tube. So if you don't know how to do that, um, we've got other videos where we talk about uh, how you discharge the tube. Mm -hmm. So we'll leave a link below in the description uh, of how to do that, so cool. Okay. Now we have this all disassembled, we're going to send off the leg pieces to get powder coated and Chance is going to clean up the rest of the cabinet, get it vacuumed out, and then we're going to work on the monitor and the board. So now that we've got the game completely torn apart, we're going to switch gears and focus on the individual components that we need to clean. First things first, all of the hardware. So I've dumped it all into a little tiny plastic container full of CLR. There are many cleaning products like it, this is just my weapon of choice. I gave it a quick rinse and this actually got rid of all of the rust. However, as you can see, they're all still quite tarnished. So we're going to dry them off and then we're going to throw them into a tumbler with some crushed English walnut to kind of clean up the metal a bit. These tumblers are used in the firearms world to clean up ammunition casings so that you can reload them and use them again. The firearms industry actually uses crushed English walnut as well. However, it's quite expensive. So pro tip. I would pick some up in the reptile section of your nearest pet store as it's the exact same stuff that you use for reptile bedding. You can usually get quite a bit more for substantially cheaper. I let all of this hardware sit in the tumbler for about 48 hours and as you can see it comes out nice, bright, shiny and clean. And then to finish them off, a coat of primer and a couple of nice coats of semi-gloss spray paint. Shifting our focus to the monitor, we've got to clean off about 40 years of grime and crap. Now, if you've followed us on the Canadian Arcade for any amount of time, you'll know that our preferred way to do this is actually to soak the monitor down with some Simple Green and then to rinse it off with some warm, unpressurized tap water. We've got another really good video on how to do this that we'll leave a link below down in the description. Next on our list is the Atari coin reject button. First things first, we've got to remove it from the game. 
We do this by unscrewing the two screws on the back of the bezel and pulling the whole thing apart. Now that we've got it out of the game, we're going to tear it apart and give it a nice cleaning and a good polish. I've also gone and replaced the Atari branded coin reject label. Once we're happy with the way it looks, we're going to simply reinstall it back onto the side of the game. Next we tackle this horrifying power cord. You can tell it's been spliced in a couple of places and I want to save the original connector. We're going to replace this whole thing with one I bought off the shelf at my local Home Depot. Switching gears to the start buttons, I noticed that we actually have three different kinds, two plastic ones that don't match, and two originals that are quite worn. We're going to replace these with fresh reproduction metal ones from ArcadeShop.com. Speaking of start buttons, I tested the one that wasn't flashing with my multimeter. Interestingly enough, it was actually just miswired. We'll swap those wires around, and it should work fine once we get the game reassembled. Pro tip, whether you're working on arcade games or pinball machines, a multimeter is probably one of your most valuable tools. Speaking of valuable, next we need to take a look at the issues with the game board. For something this technical, we've taken the PCB over to our buddy Andre's place to have a look. He's got a sweet setup and is far more capable to repair the issue than Josh or I ever could. Plus, the guy works on missile guidance systems for fighter planes for a living, so who better to do the work? Sure enough, after a bit of testing, we discovered that Josh's hunch on the RAM issues was correct, so Andre swapped the old RAM out for some new chips. He installed sockets first, so these chips could be replaced with minimal effort if they were ever to fail again. Andre is an absolute beaut, and we can't thank him enough for the amazing work he does for us. Now to try my own hand at a bit of electronics repair. I'm going to rebuild the audio regulator board with some fresh capacitors, and then I'll recap the monitor as well. We picked these kits up from ArcadePartsAndRepair.com. During the teardown, we noticed that the power plug on the chassis had been cut and spliced with morettes, so I put a proper connector back on. I've also gone ahead and replaced the big blue capacitor on the power supply with a new one. Shifting our attention to the cabinet, I felt that the original T-molding was looking a bit rough and needed to be refreshed. We'll put some new stuff on in a few steps, but for the time being, because it makes a bit of a mess when removing the old stuff, I took the opportunity to vacuum out 40 years of dust and cobwebs from the cabinet. Speaking of rough, the speaker grills needed a bit of paint, so I masked them off and hit them with a little bit of semi-gloss black. Now, back to the T-molding. For this, we'll need new molding, a small bit of felt, a rubber mallet, box cutter, a stapler, and a couple of rubber bands to hold the felt around the head of the mallet. I like to wrap felt on the face of the mallet to keep the molding from getting scuffed up during installation. I also like to use a pair of flush cutters to cut notches and breaks in the barb of the molding to help it fit around corners. Installing this is actually a really simple process. Start on one end, using a staple or a nail to hold it in place if need be, and simply hammer in the molding along the edge. As I mentioned, you'll want to cut the barb of the molding to help set it around corners, and hammer it in with the mallet as you go. Now that the cabinet is all cleaned up with fresh T-molding, it's time to put the legs back on. We're also going to install new plastic plugs and feet. The plugs were picked up on Amazon thanks to a tip from our buddy Mark Timerunner Shields, and the feet from Mike'sArcade.com. These leg assemblies came out amazing from our local powder coating shop, and I strongly advise if you're working on large metal parts like leg assemblies or control panels to use the services of a powder coater. It saves a lot of time and prep work, and usually it's not terribly expensive. Plus, if you pick the right finish, it's incredibly durable. We're going to be putting this cabinet at bar height and match it up with the Minty Asteroids Deluxe cabinet I also have in my collection. At full length, the legs of the cabinet are quite stable and actually more enjoyable and approachable. Plus, you save a little bit of space not having to add stools around the game. And now that the cabinet's upright, we're going to be reinstalling the coin box with a fresh new lock on it. One of the things I wanted to keep original on this game is the glass top. Not only is it incredibly expensive to ship one over the border from Phoenix Arcade, but aside from a few scratches on top, the rest of the artwork is pristine. Using some simple green and a razor blade, we'll clean off the grime that was under the brackets holding it down. Next, we'll rebuild the lid assembly, starting with the cardboard bezel. 
It's also an amazing shape aside from a small warp. To fix this, I've elected to staple it down to the wood top before placing the smoke plexiglass over it and adding the display glass. One of the parts of this restoration that worried me the most was reinstalling these metal brackets holding the glass to the lid. I wasn't sure they were going to fit right after the powder coating, but to my surprise, they were perfect. I used a couple of bar clamps to convince them into position and then screwed them down. Now that the lid assembly was complete, it's time to install it back on the cabinet and switch gears to the control panels. This is where I'll admit I had the hardest time on this restoration. Now, I pride myself on being an expert at installing overlays and side art, however this set of CPOs was incredibly challenging. At one point I had to abandon my plans for using the dry method and switch over to the wet method. This involves soaking down the panel with some water and isopropyl alcohol mix, spraying down the sticky side of the artwork, carefully lining up the artwork with the panel, then squeegeeing out any of the bubbles and excess spray. It's messy work, but it had to be done. Once the control panel overlays were installed, I added back the wiring harnesses and buttons. I also added brand new pylons to hold the wiring harnesses to the metal, just like the original ones had been. Flipping over to the top of the panels, I installed the potentiometers and then clamped down the rotary knobs with an Allen key. The only thing left to do at this point was to reinstall everything back into the cabinet. That is the restoration of the Atari Warlords cocktail cabinet. Josh, uh, what do you think, man? Well, you know, the biggest thing for me was really that RAM error that was coming up. I knew everything else would be super easy to do once you got around to it. All the powder coating, the overlays, everything else. But that RAM error really uh, bothered me and I had a theory about it. And uh, I, I pitched the idea to you which chip it was and it turned out to be that chip. Yeah. And I'm actually really thrilled that it worked out the way it worked out. <laughs> so Josh looked at the schematic and figured that out, which I'm, I'm really happy that you were able to figure that out because it took us a lot of, uh, it saved us a lot of time mm -hmm. uh, doing that. Um, one thing that I'll say was a pain in the butt were the overlays. Um, right. Doing the overlays on this, like I said, I, I know how to do vinyl graphic installation quite well doing um, the wet method or the dry method doesn't really matter to me, but when we got right down to it, like the dry method on these, it just, it, it was gonna screw up. So having to pull them, having to soak them down and do the wet method um, mm -hmm. with some ISO and some, some water and a spray gun and then work some of the little bubbles out. I mean, I, I got most of them out. Uh, I, I, you I wouldn't mean, be able to tell. I, I, I don't see anything. Like I've come over, you haven't shown me <laughs> where any of these things are and nothing is jumping out at me. Like it looks really great. Right. Well, I guess then I, I did a decent yes, enough job. Yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm picky. Um, the one thing we didn't do on this was replace the glass. Now, uh, Phoenix Arcade does sell reproduction glass. They're the guys who provided us uh, with the overlays. Mm -hmm. uh, so Darren had those in stock. He does sell the glass. Um, it's just this one, I mean, it's got some patina to it. It's right. got some some scratches well, think, on it. I think the color is good. It's just the surface scratches or whatever. And yeah. I understand that can be polished out if you have a, a place that'll polish glass. But. Yeah. And I mean, I just, it didn't, it, none of the art, you're right, is chipped. The, mm -hmm. the art is really good. So I decided just to kind of leave that yeah. the way it was. Yeah. Um, but for, you know, for everything else on the cabinet, uh, the only other thing that I think I would do is maybe uh, touch up the paint on the right insides on the inside of the wings. The yeah, that's yeah. the only thing I think I, I neglected. But other than that, I, I'm loving this thing. No, it it looks is great. Dude. Great, looks mint. So yeah, very very happy with this project. Uh, very very uh, very happy with this game. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to do a shout out to uh, local guy Blair. Uh, Blair, thank you so much again uh, for helping me get a hold of this. Uh, really appreciate it, man. Um, this game's a keeper. I'm gonna have it for a very long time. Um, and I'm pretty sure if we fold you up right, we can stick you in this when you die. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's with you forever. Yeah, but then all these other games that I really want to keep, 
Yeah. We'll, <laughs> we'll cut you up into pieces and yeah, yeah, we'll, spread you about. We'll just make a mausoleum and we'll just load all those <laughs> games in there and board it up. And then a thousand years from now, uh, when they find my tomb, that can be... Uh, it's going to be a fine for somebody. All right, guys. Well, that's going to do it for this episode of the Canadian Arcade. If you like what we're doing here on the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And if you want more content from us, we post a ton of things on Instagram. So make sure you go ahead and follow us there, too. And until next time, thanks for watching. As soon as that hole pops, it'll take the... Oh, shit. I thought you had it. No. <laughs> Why did they say 22 minutes? Oh, because this hour is... That was 22 minutes. I figured it was a Canadian thing. I had time to shave and cut my hair. I thought you were going to go as the dude for Halloween. Mm, maybe next year. Yeah, okay. Uh, so go ahead and check us out there. And until next time... Thanks for watching. I don't know where was you're going. Was it 22 minutes or was it... You just walked out. I, you know, because that's what we always do. We always walk away from the camera. Sounds kind of dumb. Before we get too far here, do I, I forget what I say. See you next time. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. You're always thanking somebody. Right. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. I, I feel like I want to say, see you next time. I, but then you're always like, until next time. Thanks yeah, for watching. that's why. <laughs> we've always done thanks for watching. I don't think we've ever done see you next time. It's just because we haven't done a video for so long. Oh, yeah, I'm yeah, just yeah. like, yeah, we're, I, I knew it was one or the other, right? <laughs> we're busy people. Full-time jobs. That's right, man. Yeah, you, we don't make enough on YouTube or anything on YouTube to be able to do this full-time. One day, maybe. We should start a Patreon. Ooh.